So Mary, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me today. Oh, thrilled to be invited. Thanks, Michaela. Like everybody else, we've gone online and I've been doing a series of video interviews for the Future Social Service Institute newsletter. So we send them out to very diverse group of community sector leaders, students, academics and government. So really keen to get some reflections from you. Lots of people will know who you are, but just in summary, in terms of introducing you, you are a very experienced and strategic leader across the not-for-profit public and corporate sector. You had a 13-year career in state politics as a Liberal MP from 2006 through till just the beginning of this year. And one of the reasons that, Mary, I think I mentioned I reached out to you to do this interview was you popped up in my LinkedIn profile as having just been appointed as the board chair of Global Citizen Australia. That's a really interesting appointment. Can you tell me in a, in a thumbnail what that's about? Well, Global Citizen is a worldwide movement of um, people, particularly young people, uh, who are passionate about ending global poverty. And a small Australian organisation, although Global Citizen's founded by Aussies uh, in New York, and we're working with Australian citizens to mobilise them on, on the issues of global poverty and advocating particularly to government, but also corporates and non-profits to, to invest to try and end poverty in the next 10 years. So that's one in a string of very significant public service contributions that you've made. And just prior to joining Parliament, you were the CEO of Foundation for Young Australians for four years. The thing also that I am personally very grateful to you for is after you're doing your MBA at Harvard, you were part of the team that established the not-for-profit scholarship program that Mm. I was a very fortunate recipient of and I know from a bunch of community sector leaders has made a huge difference and been a great contribution to the sector's leadership so on behalf of the sector thank you for what was a great idea and I know a lot of work to keep that going so that really is one of the things that I wanted to start asking you about is your deep thread and long commitment to public service across your career And what it is that motivates that and inspires you and has driven you through your career? When I often think about tracing it back, I think actually it goes back to the time when I was a Rotary Exchange student as a 16-year-old. And one of my host fathers was the mayor of the local community. And he involved me in everything, as you can when you're a student, you know, living overseas for a year. And What I saw is that passionate and motivated people can make a difference in their community and it really brought that home to me and I think my commitment to public service uh, came through observing and being involved in his activities but also seeing the difference that it made in people's lives. And what I've always found is that because I did a business degree and I went and worked in business environments. When I was at McKinsey, I was working out of New York office. Everyone was heading down to Wall Street and finance. It was, uh, you know, the mid-90s. And I put my hand up to work in healthcare and was heading out to New Jersey or Ohio or not so such salubrious locations. But the work was really interesting. And what I always sought to find in the work that I did was its connection to the difference it made in people's lives. So even in a corporate environment. I came back to Australia and worked for Kerry Packer, actually doing deals and and overseeing uh, his investments. And that's when it really sort of struck home because my job was to make him richer And that was very motivating for him, but I didn't find that motivating at all. Um, And it was at that point, really, that I thought I want to commit in a much more comprehensive way to working in the community sector and in public policy to use the skills and expertise that I had to have that connection to making a difference in people's lives. Mm. So, Mary, during your time in politics, you served as Minister of Mental Health community services, disability, women's affairs portfolios. From your experience in those leadership roles, what have you learned? What are the lessons about working in and alongside government from the community sector perspective? I've got to say I saw the full range and and obviously I was in opposition for the first four years and then in government for four years um, and then back in opposition again. And I think uh, the key thing is 
for the community sector to engage, but not in a way that for the sake of it, with substance. And I think if you haven't seen or know or understand how a minister works or a minister's office works, the number of people who came for a chat, uh, which while lovely, was not very helpful. It's thinking about the issues of the sector, but also thinking about the issues from the perspective of the shadow minister or the minister and coming with ideas both that articulate what the problem is, but also some solutions about how to fix it. And the people who I met with, who invited me to come out and see their operations or or met with me in my office, who could talk through the issues, the substance and some ideas around solution were people that I then worked with over the full 13 years of my time in Parliament because you're coming up with policy ideas, you're trying to solve problems, you're trying to improve the quality of the services and the support that's being given and that's how it can be done effectively. And that happens through PEAKS and we worked together when when you were president of ECOS. But it also happens directly through organisations themselves because PEAKS often manage a a range of dynamics. Mm. I also had fantastic relationships with CEOs of individual organisations who would help me to learn and understand and also think about those solutions. The other thing I think is crucial is you have to work with oppositions as well as governments. Now, governments don't always like that, but I always found the greatest policy innovation came on the transition from opposition to government because the policy work happens without the constraints of central agencies like Treasury and, you know, Premier's office and Department. And so you could actually be much more creative in your policy thinking in opposition. And then when elected, you actually get to put it in place. I had a a number of things the public service would say, oh, we can't do that. And I was like, well, we've promised we're doing it. We're doing it. Let's work out how. And so I think it's really important to engage with oppositions and with governments, understanding that things change and there's great opportunities to be part of that policy thinking for shadow ministers as well as ministers once they're in government. Mm. Mary, you've demonstrated in that work that I've seen and you've talked about a real commitment to particularly children and young people and this appointment and the way you describe, you know, Global Citizen and the Foundation for Young Australians has kind of demonstrates that. Where does that come from and what are your thoughts about children, young people and, you know, in this moment when young people are being so differentially impacted by the pandemic. What's your thoughts and advice when they're thinking about their career? So I'm always so inspired by young people and it goes back to that broader perspective of the capacity to drive change. And one of the things I've always tried to do, you know, starting at the Foundation for Young Australians but subsequently is not think about young people as the leaders of the future, they're actually the leaders of today and have the ideas and the the solutions for their own issues. So young people driving and being part of the change that they want to see and you know they don't let you down Um, and you can put in place supports and education and um, and mentoring and mechanisms to to help young people to be effective and that's from leaders in schools through to I found young people in the youth justice system you know all young people can contribute to being part of the solution for what they want to see changed and I think it's really important that young people, you know, do have hope for the future, that, you know, this is a very difficult time at the moment and obviously people are experiencing mental ill health as a result and a lot of anxiety and concerns. You know, I think it's good that we're talking about those issues more. There's access to great support if needed. But importantly, I think if you use the time to think about what you're passionate about, what you care about, where you can contribute, what work you're interested in doing. On the career side of things, I've always thought it's really important if you can to do what you're passionate about because, you know, working hard, being effective is helped when you're excited 
by the mission of what you're working towards. And so find what you're passionate about. Volunteer in that context if you need to, to get some experience. Put your hand up for all sorts of roles. Get your foot in the door. I've got a favourite saying from my time as that exchange student back in Canada, which was Wayne Gretzky, who was the number one goal scorer in the North American Ice Hockey League. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You know, you've got to have a go. You've got to put your hand up. You've got to get in the game. And then opportunities arise. And often you surprise yourself by putting yourself forward what you can actually achieve. So, you know, I'd encourage all young people, think about what you're passionate about, have some big goals and and aspirations and have a go. Put yourself forward, have a shot. If you don't get it this time, it's a good chance you'll get it next time. It's a fantastic quote. And I think that what I have observed in the years that I've known you is one of your passions around really deeply listening, you know, and I think one of the things that we're not necessarily very good at is deeply listening to young people. I think we underestimate them often. And the point you just made around, they're not just the leaders of the future, they're leaders of today and listening to them now. We talk a lot about today's experts by experience, people who are experts in their own lives. And we've got a long way to go to really do that justice with young people. So Thank you very much for taking time to talk today, Mary. Uh, It's a pleasure to be with you, Michaela. Thank you.